is a short video on how to make a bar graph in SPSS. So just like with a pie chart, we go into a chart builder to build our um, bar graph. And I, one of the easiest things to do if I have this old um, information entered here is just to click reset um, at the bottom of the chart builder. So this, this time I want to go over to the gallery here and say I want to build a bar graph. And if you notice, there's all sorts of different kinds of bar graphs. This bar graph here is a simple bar, and this is just for univariate um, information, right? So it's a lot like a pie chart. Um, and we use some of the same logic. We're gonna we would put our political um, party here on the x-axis. And then we would need to specify, do we want to do a count or a percentage over here? Um, do we want to do a count out of the ground total? Right? What kinds of um, order do we want things to be? And it looks very similar to um, to the X, what the access label is, right? So we can like have a label there, there's a legend, all this is good stuff um, that we can go through. What's more complicated is um, these two. So this is a cluster bar graph and this is a stacked bar graph. And so these are basically a cross tab in a bar graph form. So I'm going to show you examples of how to do both of these. Right? So I'm really interested in political party here um, and I'm really interested in the relationship between political party and um, gender. I can find it. So if you notice up here, there's the cluster, cluster on X dialog box. So we put one variable down here on the bottom and one variable up here on the top. And a lot like um, cross tabs, it doesn't matter quite as much which one goes where. It's a lot of that is based on like format. But what we do want to make sure to do is just like a cross tab, we want to percentage on the independent variable, which in this case is respondent sex. So whether that's down here on the x-axis, up here on the cluster box, right? We want to make sure that that's the thing that we percentage on. So we need to figure out how we're going to do that. Um, one here is that this asks you what you want this bar statistic to be. So right now it has count, which is not particularly useful. So let's do percentage instead. And we want to, if we just do percentage like this, it'll make all of these percentages out of the total. So just like a cross tab, we don't want to do that. So instead we're going to set the parameters of this percentage. And we'll see that we have three options. We can do out of the grand total, which is what it's set as a default, and that's not what we want. We can do the total for each x-axis category. So if our independent variable is here on the x-axis, so it's down here, this is what we'd want to pick. But that's not the case, right? This is our dependent variable. And finally is the total for each legend variable category. Um, and so that's what this cluster group is up here. These are the legend variable categories. So we're going to put that. That's where our independent variable is. And so that's what we want the denominator to be for computing the percent. And that's kind of the most complicated part of these graphs. So I'm going to click Apply. And we'll see that a lot of the other um, dialog boxes look the same. You can change the order. You can um, change the access label. You can change the group color or um, whether you want men or women to go first in the dialog box. So we can apply all of these changes. You also can still put titles and footnotes. Some of these basic elements are really the same. The biggest issue, just like cross tabs, is how you percentage. So I'm going to click OK and see kind of what it makes. Okay, so it makes this, this graph. And so I need to really think for a moment whenever I do a bar graph like this, like what each of the bars stands for. So in this case, this should be, um, so the green is male. This should be that this is the percentage of men who identify as a strong Democrat. That's what this bar is. And this is the percentage of women who identify as a strong Democrat. And this is the percentage of men who identify as an independent. And this is the percentage of women. So what we can do is we can go through and see visually, like, where do we see, like, the biggest gaps, right? We see a big gap here, independent and Republican. We see a big gap over here, 
and a big gap over here. So that can be really useful. We also, since there are so many categories here, we also could make a stacked bar graph out of this. Um, so I'm going to go back into graphs. So what I recommend with stacked bar graphs is that you really need to put your independent variable on the x-axis. So these don't work. Um, so I'm going to need to move these around. All right, so I'm going to move sex down here. And that's because we really, it's, ideally we want each bar to add up to 100%. So I'm going to switch these around. And so in this case, I want to percentage on my independent variable, right, which is now on this x-axis down here. So I'm going to change that. Oh, oh, what's going on? We don't want to do it out of the total. Why is it doing that to us? Um, So you know what happened is that the other variable didn't end up in the box. This is a good lesson, right? Look, there is no stacked second variable. So we're going to move political party up there. Sometimes it just doesn't take. There we go. Okay, so now it should let us percentage correctly. So we want a percentage off of the x-axis categories. So that's where independent variable is. It's down here on the x-axis. We're going to do that. So we're going to apply those changes, and we can go ahead and tinker with all of the other aspects of this graph. Click OK, and here it is. Um, and I think this actually is easier to analyze in a stacked bar graph. Right? We could have flipped these around so Democrats were on top, or Republicans are on top, and Democrats are on the bottom. We reversed our scale. We get ascending or descending. But we can see among um, men and women kind of like where their political affiliations are. And we can go in just like the pie chart and go in and change the colors. We can make this text bigger. These are all important um, things to do. If you just double click on it, you can, you can change all of those things, right? Lots of stuff that you can do. There's also some other options here with by you can insert titles, though this is kind of clunky. Um, you can also change, transpose the chart coordinate system, which you may or may not want to do. Um, you really don't want to do that and do that. Um, so you can kind of play around with some of the options here.